Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Assembly of God Online. My name is John Martin. I serve as the lead pastor of our church. It's my joy and privilege to welcome you to our online church service today. And today, a very special day, Mother's Day, we want to give a shout out to every mom, every lady who has invested into our lives. Thank you so much for all of what you have done, for all of what you are doing to touch our lives. And today we want to honor you. And so as we lift up the name of the Lord today, as we worship him, let's think about our moms and let's give him the honor and glory that's due his name. Let's worship the Lord together. It's nothing better than Jesus. We're here to declare that this morning. And let's just watch God change things around and turn things around. That's what he does, and he does it well. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough.
for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. It is time to pray. What a privilege this morning. Amen. Join us as we pray. 
Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with just grateful hearts, Father, with gratitude. Yes. Father, thanking you for the heard and answered prayers and your faithfulness. And Father, this morning we're very aware of the needs that are facing our church people right now. Lord, we pray, Father, for those who are facing procedures this coming week. Lord, for those who are in the hospital and those who have recently been released. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon those and bringing them through situations. Father, we think of Norm Hurst and, and Norm Hilson, Father, that you would touch our brothers and bring total healing to them. We think of the Taylor family in the loss of Pastor Bruce, praying God comfort and peace be brought to them, Lord. We pray that you will just minister and meet every person at their point of need here today. And Father, we pray for each one of our beautiful ladies yes. of Victorville First Assembly. Amen. God, we pray for our mothers today. We honor them, Lord. And we ask for your hand to be mighty upon their lives, God, that you would direct every decision, Father. Yes. Thank you that you order their steps, Lord. Thank you, Father, that they bend their knee to bow before you and honor you on a daily basis. God, we thank you that you're helping all of us mothers grow in yes. you, Lord, depend on you. You are the miracle worker, Lord. We trust you, Lord, with our children's lives. We trust you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for your favor. We ask you for your blessing, God. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Let us go ahead and continue worshiping the Lord this morning. God bless you. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe, and yes, we can see that wonders are still what we do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here.
move. We need a move. Wanna sing that, guys? of worship. Did you know another way of worship is by giving? It's not just a song or music, but also giving is an act of worship. And God has called us as sons and daughters to be worshipers. He's called us to worship in spirit and in truth. And so at this time, we are going to be receiving our tithe and our offering. There are three ways to give. The first way is through push pay by texting VF Assembly at 77977. The second way is through our church website at victorvillefirst.org. And on our homepage, you can go to the top right on our icons and click the giving tab and it will direct you with the rest of the instructions. And on the third way we have, you can send in your tithe and offering to our church address at 15260 Nisqually Road. Let's pray as we give today. God, we thank you so much just for this moment to be able to give to you. We thank you that you are such a great father and that you provide for us. We thank you that we lack nothing, but we thank you for your faithfulness. God, we thank you, Father, for health. We thank you, Father, for financial uh, provision. And we just thank you for who you are. At, and th- today, Father, we give you our worship. We worship you in spirit and in truth. And so we pray that your kingdom would be expanded. God, we pray for salvations, Father, even as we give, Father, through our tithe and offering. And so we love you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you give today, church. Happy Mother's Day. In fact, if you are in the room with your mom or a special woman that's been a mother figure in your life, would you give her a big hug? Would you give her a lot of love at this moment and celebrate her? Tell her how much you appreciate her. We want to honor you moms today because you are awesome. In fact, we think about all the moms that are 
constantly sacrificing for single moms, for moms that have been working and and raising up kids, for moms that have adopted, and even for women who have been mother figures for others throughout their life. They continuously give and give and give. And today, moms, today's all about you. And we thank you for your love, your dedication, and your service before your family and to the Lord. So thank you so much. Today, we want to celebrate you not only with words, but we are also doing an amazing giveaway on social media. In fact, on Facebook, there's a giveaway away post. If you tell us what the best advice is that your mom has given to you and uh, tell us why she's a hero in your life, we are giving away a gift card for you and for that special woman in your life. So make sure if you haven't done it, do it right now because during our post service, we are going to announce the three winners. So don't miss out on this great opportunity to celebrate your mom or that special woman in your life. Thank you yet, yet again, moms. We honor you and we celebrate you today. A hero is a person who faces danger and combats adversity through feats of ingenuity, through feats of courage, through feats of strength. What makes a hero? Heroes aren't just born. They are people who step up to the challenge that is there in front of them. Today, I want to talk to you on this fourth part of this series of a wonderful lady who is an incredible hero in the New Testament, a lady by the name of Lydia. But before we get into that, this came across my desk, and with it being Mother's Day, I want to take a moment just to to share a, a fun thing that actually made me laugh out loud. And so here we go on Mother's Day. Let me share this with you. A young man was walking through the supermarket one day to pick a few things up that he noticed that there was an old lady who followed him around the supermarket. Thinking nothing really of it, he ignored her and continued on. And finally, he went to the checkout line, but she got in front of him. Pardon me, Sonny, she said. I'm sorry if my staring at you has made you feel uncomfortable, but it's just that you look exactly like my son, who I haven't seen for a long time. The young man replied to her, that's a shame. Is there anything I could do for you? She said in response, yes. When I'm leaving the supermarket today, can you just say goodbye, mother? It would really make me feel good. I would feel so much better. Sure, said the young man. So as the young woman was leaving, he called out, goodbye, mother. And she waved and she blew him a kiss. And as he stepped up to the checkout counter, he saw that his total was $127.50. $127.50. How could that be? He asked the clerk. I only purchased a, a few items. And the clerk said back to her, your mother said that you would be paying for it for her. Well, as I think about Mother's Day, I think about what a great trick that was for that lady to pull on that guy. And I'm not saying that, ladies, you should do that. But the fact is, is that he got one pulled over on him. And as I think about the investment that we can give back, the least we can do is to invest into the people's lives that have invested so much into us. Well, that lady didn't invest anything into him, but so many ladies do, so many moms do, so many grandmothers do, so many of you do, and I want to thank you for all of what you are doing to invest into the next generations. You truly are a blessing. Well, today, as we look at Lydia, I want to just kind of set the tone for this, if I may, a little bit this morning and, and, and help us understand that Lydia lived and worked in Philippi, and, and she was one who dealt 
uh, in textiles colored with the purple dye. A purple dye in which that region was very famous for. Her wealth allowed her to live independently in a very spacious home. She was a religious seeker. And she was one who worshipped the God of the Jewish people. It's really interesting because as we see in Lydia's life, she really becomes, in Scripture, the first recorded convert in Europe to the Christian faith. It was on Paul's second missionary journey that she received Christ and subsequent then became baptized in water. She was from Asia Minor, Asia Minor, and, and as I think about Asia Minor and, and the specific city of Thyatira, which is actually recorded, if you remember, in Revelation chapter 2, one of the seven churches there in, in Thyatira is being called out. But Thyatira was known for its indigo or purple dye, and she became in a sense, a salesperson, a dealer in that purple dye in textiles in cloth that was dyed that way. It was only the very wealthy who had purple. You know, I I think about the Los Angeles Kings hockey team, and, and I think about their original colors. We think of them, maybe if you follow ice hockey, that we think of them as black and silver and white today, but their original colors were purple and gold. And it's that purple and gold color that is so typically associated with royalty. It was only the very wealthy who could afford that color purple, that dye because of how expensive it was to be able to dye it that color. As I think about Lydia today, she was an incredible blessing. And there's four thoughts I want to leave with you this morning, if I may, that help us to understand what Lydia was all about and, and the hero that she really was. And, and so four principles as I leave this with you today. Number one, very simply, is never limit God. God is the God of bringing people together in the most unlikely circumstances that we could possibly think of. We go to the book of Acts chapter 16, which is where we will be reading most of uh, our text from today. And starting in verse number 14, it says, We boarded a boat at Troas and sailed straight across to the island of Samothrace. And the next day we landed in Neapolis. From there we reached Philippi, a major city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath we went a little way outside of the city to a river bank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. And we sat down to speak with some women who had gathered there. One of them was Lydia from Thyatira. Lydia from Thyatira. It's Paul's encounter with Lydia in Philippi that was not just a random occurrence. This was God's ordained meeting. God bringing Paul and Lydia together at a very crucial point. Their travel plans had been orchestrated by the Holy Spirit from different points in the world to converge in a place where the Gentile city of Philippi would have this amazing church that would start. I think about the letter that Paul later wrote to the church in Philippi and the great joy that he talked about because of that church. Well, it was ladies who had gathered at that riverbank. Maybe they were washing their clothes. Maybe it was the local laundromat at that moment. And God saw fit to bring them together. See, friends, you've got to remember that Paul was stopped from going to a certain place as it's recorded there in the book of Acts. And they saw a man from Macedonia saying, come over and help us out. And so they concluded that the Holy Spirit was in it to open a new door, to open an opportunity for them to go that direction. Sometimes God closes certain doors and he opens others that he wants us to walk through. 
so important that we are led by the Holy Spirit. And as we are led by the Holy Spirit, never limit what God can do. God is the God of the impossible. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, it says, Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Everybody in your living room, everybody in your family room, as you're listening to this, say the word all just out loud, all. Say it again, all. With God, all things are possible. There's not a single thing that God cannot do because he is the God of that which is possible. I think today of what A.W. Tozer once said and wrote about, he said, God is looking for people through whom he can do the impossible. What a pity that we plan only the things that we can do by ourselves. That God is not wanting us to just plan what we can do. And there's so many things in life that we can do that we don't necessarily need God's help. And God's saying, I want to do the impossible through you. And God brought the impossible together through a dream, through direction. Through the leading of the Holy Spirit, God brings Paul to a place where he meets a lady by the name of Lydia. Lydia who dealt in the color purple, who dealt in textiles, and she was used of the Lord to help start a church, a powerful, powerful ministry. The movie Soul Surfer, is the inspiring true story of a teenage surfer by the name of Bethany Hamilton. Bethany lost her left arm in a shark attack that came suddenly her direction one day. And through sheer determination and unwavering faith in Jesus Christ, God brought her through. Bethany was born to surf a natural talent who took to the waves at a very young age. She was leading an amazing life there in Hawaii on the island of Kauai. She participated in a national surfer competition with her best friends. But on a Halloween morning in 2003, a 14-foot tiger shark came out of nowhere and seemed to shatter all of her dreams. Soul Surfer, the movie, reveals Bethany's fight to recover from her ordeal and how she grappled with the question of her future. Strengthened by the love of her parents and the support of her church youth group leader, Bethany refused to give in or give up. And when we don't give in and when we don't give up, God can use moments that can be devastating God can use moments that are out of the ordinary. God can use moments that are certainly not even on our radar to do the impossible, to do the miraculous, to do some things that we never thought that we would be able to do in our lifetime. God's using Bethany Hamilton today as a major voice of his to speak life into students' lives. And I want to challenge you today to never limit God. Never limit what God can do in your life. Don't put God in a box, but rather let the sides of the box, let the top of the box, let the bottom of the box be blown to smithereens so that you can never limit God and let God do what he wants to do through you. A second thing that we must understand today is that as we never limit God, secondly, we must be available. Be available. Sometimes we miss that point in how powerful, how important it is that we're just available. It was Mary K. Ash, the founder of that famous cosmetic line, who once said, God does not ask your ability or your inability He only asks your availability. 
God's not looking for your ability or your inability. He's looking for your availability. Are you available? Are you open? Open to be used of God. In Acts chapter 16, verse 14, it says, a merchant of expensive purple cloth who worshiped God. What a great combination. I think it's a great combination. I just want to give a shout out to every lady who may be a business person, but they worship the Lord. What a great combination that is, that you love the Lord, but you also do what you need to do in business as well. May God grant everyone the ability to make sure that we keep these things in proper perspective, that we are available. And when you are a worshiper, you're a God-fearing worshiper, when you choose to lift up the name of the Lord, it is amazing how you become available. God starts to do things inside of you to make you more available to what he wants to do. It was Mary at a teenage age where God called her out to be the mother of Jesus. And Mary, after the angel said everything that he did to her, and we tend to just really focus on it only at Christmas time, but but it's just so powerful here, particularly on this Mother's Day, that, that Mary responded in Luke 1, 38, and said very simply, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. In other words, may what you want to do, Lord, as the angel has said this, may it come true in my life. May it be to me as you have said, says another translation, that we're open, we're available. In Luke chapter 10, verses 38 and 39, it also says, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. So we have Mary, the mother of Jesus. We have Martha and we have Mary, who were open and receptive to to receiving, and that we and our availability. I think of some amazing ladies in the New Testament, in particular, let alone the Old Testament as well. I think of Lois. I think of Eunice. I think of Anna. I think of Phoebe. I think of Priscilla. I think about some amazing ladies that were used of God powerfully to touch other people's lives. And it starts with just being available. I remember as a teenager, praying, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Just make it clear to me what you want me to do and I'll head down that path. It's amazing if you start praying prayers like that, that you say, Lord, I'm available. How God will start doing things in your heart and in your life. Be available to what God wants. A prominent pastor once said, what is God looking for in the world? Assistance? No. The gospel is not a help wanted ad. It is a help available ad. God is not looking for people to work for him, but people who let him work mightily in and through them. Lord, I'm available You know where I live. I'm happy to be used of you. Just direct me however you want, and I'll move in that direction. Which leads nicely to the third point that I want to leave with you today. And the third point is that we need to have an open heart. Open your heart. In the last part of verse number 14 of Acts chapter 16, it says, as she listened to us, the Lord opened her heart and she accepted what Paul was saying. She was someone who worshiped the Lord. It, it, it kind of reminds me of, of Cornelius. Cornelius who, was, who opened up his home in Acts chapter 10 and, and as he opened up his home, they, they went over and they, they had fellowship and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit fell upon them and a powerful move of God took place. See, when you, when you are available and then you are open, God does a special work in your life because she listened to the Holy Spirit and she was open to God, use 
her, she was able to impact her household and, and others that were around her. Luke records that after she professed her belief in God, she and her whole household were baptized. Wow. Open your heart. When I think about opening our hearts, I'm asking you today to be receptive. To be receptive. And, and, and so the word receive is, is a word I want you to just jot down on a piece of paper, maybe say it out loud, kind of get it stuck in your head today. As you have an open heart, continue to receive from God that which he wants to give you. God only wants to give you good things. And it's amazing how our hearts are open sometimes to receiving things that are, are not of God, things that God doesn't want us to spend time on, things that, that aren't really beneficial for us. And so we're receiving the wrong message. And, and rather than putting up the shield of faith and deflecting those things, we're receiving that. I want to challenge you to make sure that you receive that which God wants to give you. Proverbs chapter 2 as we're in this Proverbs challenge for this month today, I encourage you to read in Proverbs 10 the, the chapter that coincides with the day of the month. In Proverbs chapter 2, we read about it a, a few days back. It says, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. And you will gain knowledge of God. For the Lord grants wisdom. That, that's the key phrase I want you to hear today. The Lord grants wisdom. And from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So important, particularly in these days, that we receive that which God wants to give us. That, that it's not just something that he's given to other people and you miss it. You, you've got to have a receptive heart. You've got to choose to receive it and say, Lord, what, what you're giving others, I, I want to receive that too. And God wants to give you wisdom today. Wisdom to face whatever it is that you may be facing, things in your life that you may be struggling with. God wants to give you wisdom to face that well. And the more that we face those things well, the better off we will be. Receiving from God his wisdom, his strength, his courage to face what we do, particularly as we walk through this pandemic together. Open your heart. Let God do the miraculous. And the last point that I want to leave with you today is that Lydia, one, she, she didn't limit God. Two, she was available. Three, she had an open heart to receive that which God wanted to give her. And the fourth is that she was willing to invest in others. Wow, this is so important. That God's not blessed you to hold on to it, but rather God has blessed you to be a blessing to somebody else. God wants to bless you to touch another person's life. So don't just hold on to it and hoard it to yourself, but rather be a blessing. You've been blessed to be a blessing. Be a conduit of that. Let it flow through your life into someone else's life. In Acts 16, 15, the very next verse, it says, she and her household were baptized and she asked us to be her guests. She said, if you agree that I'm a true believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my home. And I love this next statement. And it says, and she urged us until we agreed. Man, there's a good salesperson right there. She urged us until we agreed. She wasn't willing to take no for an answer. The actions of heroes arise out of the desire to invest in other people, that, that her life had been transformed, her life had been changed because of the visit of Paul and those who were with him. And I've got to remind you today that as she opened up her home, she wasn't just opening up her home to Paul. She was opening up her home to Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke Notice the whole account of what we're reading here in the book of Acts, written by Luke. He's using the, 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 the pronoun we. 
We, he was in there with them. And, and probably there were others who were part of this journey. So Paul, Silas, Timothy, Luke, some others. He, she's opening up her home to all of them. Stay with me. Stay with us. Stay with my household. She invested. She was hospitable. She returned the favor. She was generous. You know, a lot of times we, we think about generosity as, as it relates to finances, and, and that comes into play, yes. But sometimes I think generosity goes just way beyond mere money. Generosity goes to a heart perspective, a heart attitude. And, and, and I love how, on one hand, she was humble. On the other hand, she was generous. And, and what a great combination to bring humility and generosity together. May we all do that well. May we become generous people. Generous with the love that we give to other people. Generous with the grace that we offer to somebody else. Generous with a kind action, a kind heart. Generous with all sorts of blessings that we can put into other people's lives that, that God wants us to invest into other people. So, so you're living with them. They're in your family room right now. They're across the miles and they're only a text or an email or a phone call away. Invest into some people's lives. Let the Lord use you to touch them powerfully. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, it says, And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people. Just let those two words jump off the page. Reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. That's what Paul was doing as he was, he was establishing churches. He was preaching in different regions. He gets to Philippi. Now he's in Europe and as he's reaching out, he's trying to connect with some people. And it's not just by chance that he goes to the riverbank and he sees some women there, one of whom is Lydia from Thyatira. God uses moments, miraculous moments, divine moments, to bring people together to allow a greater thing come about. As God is given people into your life, invest into them, bless them, encourage them, speak life into their lives. Come alongside of them and lift them up. Help them to become everything that God wants them to become because when you do so, you're doing the right thing. Let God use you to be his hand extended. Today, as I think of these four points I want to challenge you to be a Lydia. Let God use you. I've had the blessing of having some amazing ladies in my life. I think of my mom and the investment that she made into my life growing up. I think about my mother-in-law and the investment that she has made into my life over the course of time. Two wonderful ladies. I think about my wife. And I think about the amazing investment that she's made into my life, but also into our kids. Helping them to become the people God wants them to become. Thank you to every lady who is investing into people's lives. Thank you for what you're doing. Continue to do it. Moments where you're here like, are you kidding me? I don't want to see another diaper. Moments where you don't want to read another book. Moments where you just want to get away from it all and you're saying, Calgon, take me away. The fact is, you're doing some amazing things. Thank you to every mom as you invest. Every lady who has served, in a sense, as a mom to someone else. Thank you for all of what you've done. God bless you. Would you bow your heads with me? Today, Lord, we take this moment and we thank you for each and every lady, for all of what they have done, for all of what they are doing. I pray that you would bless them on this Mother's Day. 
I also pray, Lord, today that as we think about Lydia and what she did and how she was an amazing woman, a great business lady, a businesswoman who understood sales, who understood her industry of textiles, who understood the opportunity, Lord, to submit herself to you, to help start a church, be a part of some great things that were there in Philippi. Lord, thank you for ladies who see the bigger picture and may we pick up on this wonderful role model and be your hand extended into the world in which we live. That we wouldn't just live for ourselves, but we would live to invest into other people's lives. Thank you, Lord, for using each one of us to touch lives one life at a time. And friends, maybe you came to this place online today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. The really cool thing is that God wants to have a relationship with you. He says in the book of Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking on the door of your heart, your life today. He wants you to open up the door. And today, if you'd like to do that, if you'd like to invite Christ into your life, the fact is, is that Every one of us have sinned. We've all messed up at some point in time in, that life, in our lives. And that mess up called sin puts a blemish on our lives. It is impossible for a blemished person to approach a holy God. That's why Jesus came. He came to take away your sin and mine. He who was without sin took the weight of the world, the sin of the world, died a criminal's death on your behalf so that we could have life today. Today, if you want to invite Jesus into your life, if you want to ask him to take away your sin, if you'd like to ask him to give you eternal life, he will do that for you as you reach out to him today. I'd like to lead us in a prayer of commitment very simply this morning. And if you would like to pray this prayer with me, invite Christ into your life, I encourage you to do it. Pray it with me as we do so together right now. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus into this world to die upon a cross to forgive us of our sins. Today, Lord Jesus, I put my hope and I put my trust in you. Please forgive me of my sins and give me eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, I want to remind you that the Lord has opened up his arms to you. You're now a part of his family. He has welcomed you into that relationship. and You are now a son or daughter of the Most High, and you are part of God's family. What an awesome thing that is. Thank you for making the best decision of your life. And if you did so, let us know it by sending us either an email at our church. at uh, You can send it to office at vfassembly.org. That's office at vfassembly.org or you can choose to type it in right now as you're following along saying very simply, I did it. I did it, exclamation point. Three simple words, I did it. I invited Christ into my life today. We celebrate with you and we wanna bless you. Help us help you in your next step in your walk with the Lord. Let us know about it. We'll be praying for you. In addition to that, if you don't have a Bible, we would love to send you a Bible. Let us know and we'll send one in the mail to you. We would love to connect with you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. That's our service for today. Thank you for joining us on this Mother's Day. Moms, we pray that you feel very blessed and honored by your family and of course by us, your church family. Thank you for all you do. Enjoy the rest of your day. I wanna remind you that if you have yet to enter our giveaway, please find our giveaway post on Facebook. It's a, our Mother's Day giveaway. We just want to hear what is the best advice that your mother has given to you and why she has been a hero in your life. We're going to be giving away a gift card to the winner and of course to the mother or that mother figure in your life. So make sure to put that in because we're going to announce the winners during our post service right after this. So you have a little bit of time, put it in, tell us all that good stuff about your mom. Want to remind you that we are doing the Proverbs Challenge. So today is 
is May 10th. So read Proverbs 10 today and keep joining us throughout the rest of the month as we read throughout the book of Proverbs. I also want to remind you that if you've missed any of our services, you can find those services on YouTube and Facebook. And our drive-in services for next week and the upcoming weeks is 8 a.m. in Spanish and 10 a.m. in English drive-in services. Thank you so much for joining us today for a wonderful Mother's Day service. God bless you.